it's a grift game. And so Candace is sitting here, the easiest people to get money from, and I'm just being frank, the easiest people are white conservatives. You know why? Because they love hearing a black person like Candace. First and foremost, stop selling us our own oppression. Stop taking away our self-confidence by telling us that we can't because of racism, because of slavery. I've never been a slave in this country. You ready for this? It's a doozy. I'm ready. It's 2018 in America. Does racism exist? Absolutely not. And it has never existed. Whoa! It has never existed. Wait, a whoa, whoa! It's called a grip game, brother. It's a grip game. We know the grip game. You have always had uh, uh, certain black folks who are like, yo, I can get paid by these folks by, by, by hating on black people. And when I was growing up, I had to pick cotton. The, the guys were taking out. You were born on a have, plantation. Have you ever picked cotton? No, sir. You have not lived until you pick cotton. <laughs> You're being too controversial for me. You're going to get my show taken off the air. It's fun to pick cotton. It's fun. <laughs> it makes a man out of you. <laughs> really? Welcome to the Dark Times channel. So let's go ahead and get into it. Roland Martin recently went on Stephen A. Smith's show and they were discussing DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and in particular, diving into why there's such a backlash over it. Go ahead and take a listen. All about these fragile white men who can't handle the fact they now got to compete, Stephen. They got to compete. They, not, You and I, we, we know how we were raised. We were told you got you to be twice as better. To get half as much. Have, to get half as go. much. And the problem they have now is... We are rolling up saying, no, 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 no. We want fairness. Yes, we want equity. We want inclusion. We want a seat at the table. And they, and many of them, have been riding high for centuries, decades, making money, doing well. And but rolling. all of a sudden, they freaking out, brother. But rolling, I, get, I get what you're saying, but we've seen plenty of corporations dilute, if not flat out eradicate their DEI programs. Based on what you're saying, we were moving yes. in a forward direction, then, but all of a sudden, and, and, and press, especially in the aftermath of the George yeah, Floyd murder, absolutely. but since that time, it's diluted to some degree. They've been eradicating he, DEI programs, DEI why. personnel. What's up and with that? Why. And here's why. Okay. This right here, W.B. Du Bois' book, Black Reconstruction in America. This right here is Eric Foner's book, Reconstruction of America's Unfinished Business. In the history of America, black success has always been followed by white backlash. And so, of course, Roland Martin is right on the money. In the history of the United States, every time there's been an inkling of black success, when our ancestors tried to pull themselves up by the bootstraps, they were pulled right back down. There's a reason why they created black codes. There's a reason why we weren't allowed to read and write. A lot of people are under this illusion that's about so many different things. What it comes down to, it comes down to fear and not wanting to have to compete. There's a reason why that directly after slavery, they started asking Europeans to come over, Italians, Irish, and every other ethnic group that was close to white as possible. Come get free land. We'll even teach you how to farm the land. Wanted. Strong, healthy men and women. Every resident of the United States is entitled to 160 acres of land. They've got so much of it, they give it away for free. This land is mine! Mine by destiny! It was always about the inevitable fear of being replaced. I'm thinking about somebody like a Candace Owens, a black woman, saying what she said, understanding that he, she herself is an accomplished individual, and because she's accomplished, are people to assume, if you took her words, people right. would use that as a license to dilute her accomplishments, to dilute her qualifications, and yet, that seems to be something that really was not embraced by her. Roland Martin, how do you that? explain it? How do you explain that? And let me go ahead and chime in on that real quick before Roland does. Of course, the Candace Owens isn't concerned about the consequences of her actions or the consequences of what she says or how it could come back to her. It doesn't matter. It's of no consequence because her whole come up is denigrating people who look like her. 
And so her place is solidified. She's somebody who knows who and what she is. And very few people can say that. She's a bootleg. And she's secure in that. It's called a grift game, brother. It's a grift game. We know the grift game. You have always had uh, a certain black folks who are like, yo, I can get paid by these folks by, by, by hating on black people. With my, Steven, I've had people over the years come to me and say, Roland, come to our side. And I'm going, hell no. Right. Because my side is humanity. It's a grift game. And so Candace is sitting here, the easiest people to get money from, and I'm just being frank, the easiest people are white conservatives. You know why? Because they love hearing a black person like Candace. So man, they'll sit here and like, yo, we'll roll the money out. But see, Candace is not smart. First of all, the girl dropped out of college. Here's why she's not smart. I ain't gonna say she ain't smart though. No, 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 no. Here's here's, here's why here's why I'm gonna say she's not smart. She's smart because she know the grip game. But she's she and the reason I'm saying she's not not smart. Black conservatives who know her, who pull her aside and has have told her, you need to get better educated on the issues. And so she knows who they are. But here's what why she's not smart. When she's attacking women, saying, oh, I said woman pilot, uh, I'm not gonna fly. So you see a woman engineer, are you not gonna walk into a building? Mm. If you see a woman architect, are you not gonna question that facility? If you see a woman in head of security, are you gonna question the security? What Candace also clearly doesn't understand, and many of these other different people, is that the reason we have today women who are now who've been ascending is because of tight uh, because of t- uh, title nine the problem is most people think title nine was about sports mm-hmm. it wasn't it was to open the professional schools to women who were getting federal dollars now remember now you then ask well where did title nine come from it's a provision of the 1964 civil rights act follow me here i'm going well, i'm following you i'm following you black people fought to get the 1964 civil rights act if you were disabled and you love the 1996 with American with Disabilities Act, you better thank black people because the American with Disabilities Act was passed as a result of a provision of the 64 Civil Rights Act. If you are like Korean or Chinese and you get to vote in your native language, thank black people because that's the 1965 Voting Rights Act. When you look at our housing, you can live anywhere you want to. Thank black people because that was a 1968 Civil Rights Act known as, known as uh, the Housing Act. If you are gay and lesbian, Thank, and, and you, gay marriage, guess what? That's the 14th Amendment, Equal Protection Clause. One of the three Reconstruction Amendments, which was designed after the Civil War to also benefit African Americans. And so what Candace is by, by saying is now questioning women pilots, well, let's not question all women. Well, what are you saying, Candace? Oh, you're the exception, but not everybody else. This is all about these fragile white men who can't handle the fact they now gotta compete, Stephen. They gotta compete. They, not, you and I, we, we know how we were raised. We were told you gotta, you gotta be twice as better to get half as much. Have, to get half as go. much. And the problem they have now is we are rolling up saying no, 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 no. We want fairness. Yes, we want equity. We want inclusion. We want a seat at the table. And they, and many of them, have been riding high for centuries, decades, making money, doing well. But all of a sudden, they freaking out, brother. But Roland, I get, I get what you're saying. And so, like I said earlier, at the end of the day, it comes down to a certain group or a certain demographic of people. Not all, of course. There's always exceptions to the rule. But they don't want to compete. They don't want to have to compete. And logically, that makes sense. As evil as some of y'all might think that may be or may sound, logically, it makes sense. Why would you want to have to compete with another group? In fact... What you'll do is you'll come up with a program like DEI, Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, or a program like Affirmative Action, like they did in the past. And for every one or two token blacks that you hire, you'll hire 50 white women who are considered minorities. You'll hire 50 LGBTQ individuals who are considered minorities. You'll hire 50 Latinos who are considered minorities. You'll hire 50 Asians who are considered minorities. And the one thing that all those particular groups have in common is that if you check their birth certificates, they all identify as white when it comes to race. So it's all a game that both sides like to play. 
And on that, I think that's going to be a good spot to close. And make sure you guys go ahead and hit that like button for me if you haven't done so already. And as usual, peace and chaos.